Hey y'all, so I'm back. Let's do a quick lesson on, we're gonna talk about enmeshment, but I wanna to talk to you about dog collars and I'm gonna help you not waste your money. Okay, if you see this collar right here, it looks nice, it's got reflective everything. It's got my favorite type of clip, which is this clip, okay? And it does not separate easily, all right? And you just pinch both sides, squeeze, boom, open. I'm gonna tell you what the problem is. I like this, I love this, but the problem is it's not waterproof. And if you have a dog and they've ever gotten their collar wet, you will know that there is no way to get that stink out of there. You can soak it in vinegar, hot water, soap, the funk is in there. It's there to stay. So my dog is in love with water, so I'm not dealing with that. I will show you my favorite one. This is nice, sort of. It's sturdy, but see these two little tabs right here? Those are easy to accidentally press on. And when they get pressed on, that sucker, your dog's moving around, wiggling around, you're trying to grab your dog, whatever. Those tabs get hit, boom. Slight pressure, it comes apart. So that's not the best either. I've learned that the hard way. He's got two of these. He's got one that's this color and one that's red. And it's flimsy, it comes apart easily, so it's not ideal. The one that is ideal is this one. And I will tell you why. First of all, it doesn't have flimsy tabs. It's got these tabs that you squeeze, boom, open. Put the tabs together, boom. It ain't going no damn where, okay? Now, if you look at the material really closely, you will see that while it is reflective, <clears throat> very reflective, um, but my favorite thing is it's made of some type of material. I guess it's like almost like a neoprene almost, but it's waterproof. It's sturdy. It's not going to pop open randomly and it's waterproof. I got this on Amazon. It says nimble on it. N I M B L E, which is going to be backwards on the thing there. But I got that on this on Amazon. So if you see it on Amazon, it's a safe bet. Okay, again, these tabs are not easy to come apart. You, I have to actually squeeze a little bit. And that's what you want so your dog doesn't escape your grip and go running off and chasing women dogs like my dog was doing. <laughs> um, boom, it's not coming apart. It's not, unless you break it, you know, you, you get a body, uh, a body uh, builder to yank it apart or something like that. But otherwise it's not coming apart. Um, it's not flimsy like like the other one I showed you. I mean, it, just just slight slight pressure on it and it comes right apart. There's no squeeze, squeezing involved. You just slight pressure. It's it's apart. You don't want that. Okay. This is ideal if I know he can't get wet where he's going to be. He's not going to get wet. There's no water for him to get into. But just so I don't have to chance it, I'm going to go with the waterproof one. You don't have to worry about stink, odor, soaking in soap, vinegar, hot water, killing germs. It still stinks. Uh, 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 uh. No. So there you go on that. So let's get to the meat and taters. And let's talk about enmeshment. And what is it? Because I did a video talking about someone who was enmeshed with their parent. All right. So there's two things going on. There's either... Enmeshment or disengagement. Enmeshment is an emotional bond between family members and it's intertwined, intertwined without separation. On the opposite end of the spectrum, disengagement occurs when family members are completely emotionally separate from one another. Both are considered unhealthy and can have concerning implications on a child's development and well-being. 
In healthy parent-child relationships, there is a balance between having a supportive connection and encouraging the child's autonomy. There's also a healthy separation between a parent's relationship with each other from their relationship with their children. This is very well health, by the way. Very well health, no spaces. With enmeshed relationships, parents rely on their children for emotional support. They also foster an environment in which their children have excessive dependence on them. In doing so, they don't help their children develop a level of independence as they grow. Children who are raised to be reliant on their parents for all of their emotional needs will struggle to handle basic adversity and form their own identity. Okay, so examples. A person who may have enmeshed relationships would include someone who does not have a strong sense of self, depends on others to provide validation and self-esteem, cannot function well alone, has difficulty acting alone and having a healthy, re healthy level of independence within a relationship, is unable to act and think separately from their family without feeling that the family was betrayed does not engage in activities for their own enjoyment, but looks to do what others want most of the time. Here are some examples of enmeshment. A mother who, <laughs> really? A mother who calls her son's ex-girlfriend to ask why she broke up with him. That's not, that's not appropriate. You ask your son, you don't ask his ex-girlfriend. A person who cannot make simple life decisions without consulting their parents first. A family member who takes it personally when someone else in the family moves away to take a job. A parent who relies on their child for support through their divorce. A person who has no understanding of activities he or she enjoys and instead takes on the interest of his closest friends. So again, that person has no autonomy. Your autonomy is your sense of self, your own identity. You know, what are your needs? What are your wants? So enmeshment can be a generational problem. Wow. The destruction. Wow. So these are some of the mental health effects um, from people who have enmeshment issues. And we talked about this before, how, you know, the parent may be too reliant on the child. And so when the child feel, you know, they want to get their own place and the mother or the father makes them feel guilty for leaving, which is a normal thing for them to do. They get old enough, they get their own place. They start dating, they may get engaged, they may get married, they may have a family. This is normal. But if you try to leave the nest or the psychological prison, which is what enmeshment is, that person, parent, or whoever will make you feel guilty for that. After everything your parents did for you, you just go up and leave? Wow, you're selfish. No, that's called normal. Ugh, makes me tired. It's common for people who are in enmeshed relationships to experience mental health issues. These include depression. No one should be surprised by that. It's a common experience for those in enmeshed families, especially mothers. This is because mothers with depression are likely to have unfulfilled emotional needs and seek to fill those needs through their children. Anxiety or overwhelming fear and worry can occur, especially when a person has to function alone. Substance misuse is sometimes used as an attempt to alleviate emotional discomfort. Eating disorders are especially common in adolescents with overly involved parents. 
So how do you overcome this? Okay, by setting boundaries, number one, all right? Um, I mentioned in the comment of the video I just did not long ago, earlier today, uh, I talked about how this particular person's parent is mother is not only, they're not only enmeshed, but the mother told her how many kids she should have. You should have as many kids as possible. The reason why, and I thought about this in retrospect, the reason why a narcissist wants you to have a lot of kids is because, or as many as possible, is because they can damage all of your children if you allow them to. The more the merrier. The more dysfunctional people, the happier the narcissist is. The more people, the merrier for the narc. And again, that's about a boundary violation because someone's uterus it's none of your damn business. If they have kids, if they don't have kids, if they have 25 kids, if they have one kid, it's none of your god dang business. Stay in your own lane. You don't tell your children what to do with their reproductive organs. Have you fell and bumped your head? Whew. All right, let me breathe. All right, so anyway, <laughs> again, boundaries. Enmeshment is a form of emotional control that is achieved through manipulation. This makes it difficult to form boundaries. And in fact, boundaries are mostly non-existent in enmeshed relationships. Since family members are made to feel as though they must depend on each other for their sense of self, there is no room for functioning independently. When learning to set boundaries, it can help to start slowly. It might feel uncomfortable saying no or pursuing something without permission or validation from others, but this is an important part of setting healthy boundaries. It can help to take time to think through the things that make you happy, regardless of how they affect others. In other words, you don't allow somebody to tell you whether you should be intimate with this person, not intimate with them. Y'all should uh, y'all should be married by now. You've been together for six weeks. What's the problem? Or they're angry at you because you don't have a partner. And then when you get a partner, they're like, oh, your life is all about you and your partner. You're so ungrateful for all the things I've ever done. So no matter what you do, you're host. That's why you do what the hell you want to do. Anyway, uh, make your boundaries clearly known and stick to them even when you get pushed back. And you're going to get pushed back. And you're going to be made to feel guilty because you're looking out for yourself. And sick family members don't want you healthy. Uh, that's the last thing they want. Especially if they're miserable. Okay? Mindfulness. Coming from an enmeshed family might make it difficult to recognize when you are in an enmeshed relationship as an adult because it's all you've ever known. Mindfulness is the practice of paying attention to the present moment and noticing both your external environment and your internal responses. Practicing mindfulness can help bring attention to the interactions you have with others and the way you feel about them. Noticing these patterns will allow you to recognize whether you are in an enmeshed relationship or need to set boundaries. For example, you might realize that every time you're with a certain friend, you give in to what they think and they want and cannot express your own needs and interests. This could be a sign of an enmeshed relationship. Okay? So in a healthy connection, you both cooperate with each other and you both flex for each other. You're, you're flexible. So you don't bully somebody into something they don't want to do. So if, for example, so enmeshment can happen with friends, family, parents, and children, parents and adult children, little children in the family, big children, I mean, adult children in the family. It, it can happen with anyone. It can happen with your friends. It can happen with any person that you're close to. And if you sacrifice self for them, that's bad. Okay, I'll give you an example. You agree to have lunch with a friend. And you say, they say, well, let's do it Thursday. And you say, what time Thursday? Uh, well, let's do it at one. Uh, I can't because I have a meeting Thursday. How about we do it Friday? Because I'm free on Friday. I, I My week is busy and, and Thursday I have a meeting at one. 
No, you need to do it on Thursday. What's the problem? If I was important enough to you, you would move, you would pass, you know, move that meeting out the way and, and, and make time for us. Obviously, I'm not important enough to you. You drop that person because they're unbending, inflexible, a bully, and demanding. Do it my way or get out of here. Okay. Bye. Bye. That's anybody who does not respect. You have a meeting. Why would you change to me? I mean, that don't make a lick of sense, right? Normal people's response would be, oh, you have a meeting. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you said Friday, right? Let me look at, my, let me double check my schedule and then I'll get back to you. You get back to the person, Friday would work. You know, I, I'm more available on one at one thirty. Is is that better? Because I got something to do too. So how about one thirty? Yeah, sure, that works. So that's that's a healthy thing. You kind of bend and flex with each other. You don't put your foot down and cross your arms across your chest and say either you do it my way or get the hell up out of here. Well, then I'm getting the hell out of here. Who do you who do you think you are? You don't tell grown folks what they're going to do. Unless you want to backhand. Just kidding. Or am I? Therapy. It can be difficult to recognize the impact. Quit laughing. It's not funny. It can be difficult to recognize the impact of growing up in an enmeshed, enmeshed family. <laughs> Setting boundaries can be hard, as can saying no and finding a sense of self and identity. Talking with a mental health professional can break the cycle of enmeshment and provide support and tools as you learn to function autonomously and understand your own needs. Therapy can be especially helpful for parents who are concerned about continuing the pattern of enmeshment in their own families. You can find a mental health therapist by asking for a referral from a medical professional using an online therapist finding tool or getting a referral from your healthcare provider. So, and this article is much longer. So, so here's another thing that, that people need to recognize. Okay. Are you ready? Enmeshment is a form of emotional abuse. Let me let that sink in. Enmeshment is a form of emotional abuse. Living through any kind of abuse can lead to mental health um, issues. I cannot talk today. Some common mental illnesses that are connected to enmeshment, we talked about this, right? Includes depression, anxiety, substance abuse, misuse, and eating disorders. Can people in enmeshed relationships change? When you come from an enmeshed family, it can be very difficult to change on your own. Learning to change will take hard work and time. Utilizing skills like meditation and mindfulness and working with a mental health professional can provide the tools and emotional support needed to take steps towards setting boundaries, saying no, and developing an internally derived sense of self. Okay. I mean, and, and, you know, a lot of times enmeshment can go into, um, uh, parentification, you know, the child becomes the parent and the parent asks the child, adult child or child, little child, you know, your dad and I are getting divorced. Should I start dating? Um, what do you think about us getting divorced? You know, your father's a dirt bag, right? Um, don't do like me. Don't get married. They're, they're in, in, you know, interlocked. And when you try to separate each step of the separation is going to be met with resistance, arguments, guilt, um, all you care about is you, you getting married. Did you ever think about how I would feel about you getting married? Did you ever think about how I would feel about you having children, but you just go, go up and go have kids. And you're not even looking at how that impacts me. It's not about you. 
It's about that person. So what's your problem? Um, and I know cutting a parent off is probably one of the hardest things a person's ever done. I did it. It was a sense of relief. Was it easy? No. But at the same time, when someone doesn't love you and they don't respect you, you're never going to win them over. You're never going to get them to go, you know, all your life I was just evil to you. I was just evil. And you're not getting any younger and I don't want to be this way for the rest of our lives. So why don't we start over? And why don't I, you know, I realize the error of my ways and I realize that I've not been a good person and I've hurt you and everybody else immensely and I want to change. That conversation is never going to happen. Okay. That is never going to happen. And if the person does say that, they're lying. They're never going to change. Uh, probably 1% out of a million will actually mean that and change. Um, the majority of them are doing it to manipulate you and to get your guard your guard down and get your walls down so that they can hit you harder the next time. So if you go away to college, you're a bad person because all you're thinking about is you. If you get married, all you think about is you. You're so selfish. If you have children, what is wrong with you? It's all about you, right? Um, they may even attack you because you had the wrong gender. You couldn't have a girl. You had to have a boy. You know how many boys we have in a family? You can't do anything right as if you had any control over that. And that's abusive. And they're stepping into a territory that's none of their damn business. And at the rate you're going to the family member slash parent, whoever it is that's being poisonous, you're going to mess around and never see your grandkids again. So keep talking. Keep running your mouth. Okay, keep running your mouth because if you played that game with me, you wouldn't know what your kid look like, grandkid look like. Play with me if you want to. I'm not going to have this, okay, because this stress and dysfunction will creep into your physicality. It will hurt your body. It will destroy you and you will have all kinds of stress, high blood pressure, autoimmune diseases, cancer, liver failure, kidney failure. All kinds of crap can happen to you as a result of this continual abuse. Your whole body will shut down. And the person that I was talking to you about, who I said, you know, I felt her pulling away. I could see the dysfunction a mile away. She didn't like that because you don't interrupt the dysfunction. How dare you? So... This person is also having some serious chronic health problems. One of the conditions that she has is possibly autoimmune. Well, no shit, Sherlock. You're dancing with the devil by the pale moonlight, but you want to cut off good people who have good intentions for you and turn your back on the good people and, and embrace the people that are horrible to you. That can only be changed through therapy. Because that's undying loyalty to someone who doesn't give a rat's ass if you live, die, don't live, or they don't care either way. And they damn sure don't give a damn about your um, your health. What's that, what's that got to do with me? You went to the doctor's office for blood work? God, you're selfish. I told you I needed to go to the grocery store. Right, because that takes priority over someone's health. Look here. <laughs> You know, and with people who are enmeshed, um, it's not surprising if they are narcissistic also. That's a common thread too. And everything that you do is bad. Everything that you say is wrong. Everything, everything that you do and the way that you do it is just terrible. And so cutting my parents off, I did it a long time ago. And um, the thing that hurt me the most is I'm playing with the clip. <laughs> the thing that hurt me the most was losing the connection with my brother. It hurt me to the core of my body. Deep in my soul, it hurt. 
I cried until I couldn't breathe. I could barely breathe because I hated the idea of losing him because of her, which is the mother. My brother has significant issues and he lives with her. Um, so she has complete control over him. I asked him a long time ago, do you have a girlfriend? No. Why not? I don't know. I just don't. Well, she's not going to allow that. She doesn't want him to have a connection with anyone. You don't need nobody else. All you need is me. I call her the warden because she basically runs the prison. She doesn't allow him to have friends. He is not allowed to have connections with family. He is not allowed to have connections with me. Um, so losing him was unbearable to be quite honest with you. It was unbearable, but at the same time, I have no choice because she's still alive. And as long as she has breath in her body, which is awful when she dies, I'll feel relief. Actually. Um, I'm going to just, she's evil. <laughs> she's freaking evil. So I'll feel relief when she dies. And same thing with the father. Um, when they both kick the bucket, peace out. You were, you, you were a waste of, of space anyway, both of you, a waste of space. He hated his kids. Um, I'm going to tell you, and I've said this in a video a long time ago, when the two parents were getting a divorce, My uncle said to the father, my so-called father, whatever, he's only biologically my father and that's it. And any dummy could create a kid. Anyway, it doesn't take any brain power. My uncle said to him, because they were getting a divorce, him and his wife were getting divorced, the mother. He said, well, what about the kids? You know what his response was? Are you ready? F them. F them. I didn't know that we made, forced his penis to create children, but apparently we did. And, and you know, he's, he's like so narcissistic. Both of them are. And, you know, it's easy for the male to get angry when there's children involved because he, he loves jumping up in there. But he don't want to take responsibility, especially if he's a narcissist. He doesn't want to take responsibility for children. You know, that's, that's on you. Oh, Lord, that's dark. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Um, he can easily skip down the road. So the obligation of birth control is bigger with the woman because she's the one that carries the kid. She doesn't have the luxury of skipping down the road. All right. She doesn't have that luxury. So he didn't want to be bothered with us. He likes jumping up and down on women, but, and he'll never be faithful. Um, but he don't want to deal with the kids. So whatever. So yeah, it was, it was, um, a relief to get rid of them, but Losing my brother was, was excruciating for me. Oh, I'm warm. So what else is new? Lordy be. Um, losing him was, was unbearable because I love him with, with every fiber of my being, but he's been lied to and manipulated and your sister don't care about you. She's in Missouri doing her thing. She don't care nothing about you. Lies, 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 bitch, please don't even. See, I'm not caught up in, but she's my mother. I got to have a relationship with her. I don't have to have jack shit. You're a monster. You're wicked. You're evil. No, I could care less about you or him. My brother, on the other hand, is a different story, but I had to, uh, and there's enmeshment, uh, ish, all of that up in there, uh, with them. And, um, I just had to force myself emotionally to back away and did it hurt? Oh, it hurt like hell, but I'm used to it now. So I don't know. I went through the agony for about, I don't know, about a year or off and on for a year or maybe longer. 
and then I just realized that this is the way it is and this is the way it's going to be and me being devastated by it is not going to fix it. So there really is no point in me putting all that um, energy into that because it's not going to change. So you got to do what you got to do. It may hurt like hell. It may be the worst emotional pain you've ever felt in your life, but to preserve your sanity, it's what you have to do. Okay. And eventually the pain will fade and it won't be as, mm, it's real warm today too. It's not, it's like in the 50 or 40s or 50s, which isn't too bad for November. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it hurt like hell. Worst pain I've ever dealt with emotionally. He's, he's my, he's my baby, you know, and I'm, he's an adult, but he's my baby. My brother is my baby, but, um, I had to, I had to get away from the, the, the toxins. I had to get away from the poison. And the only way to resolve it is to cut ties. And as I said before, I don't owe you nothing because you got horny and had a kid. Uh, you conceived a child. That's your hormones that did that to you. I had nothing to do with it. And as I've said before, I ruined your life by being born. But as I said before, my grandparents wanted to adopt me. And I think that she wasn't going to allow that because she hates my grandparents. Well, shit, she hates everybody. There's nobody she doesn't hate. She hates you guys and she don't even know y'all. Okay. But I think that's because she hates herself. Let's just be real because she hates herself. Happy people, healthy people, emotionally healthy people do not walk around creating negativity, darkness, problems, fighting, arguing, drama, drama, drama. Healthy people don't do that. They don't cause a lot of division between this person and that person. And da, 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 da. Healthy people don't do that. They don't, they're not a human tsunami that destroys everything in its path. That's only twisted people that do that. And I'm not going to deal with it. I don't care who you are. Your connection, our biological connection is, that's all. That's all it is. That's all it ever will be, is biological. Anything other than that, that's on you. And because she doesn't have any family, and this is off the topic for a second, because she doesn't have any family, except my brother, um, and if he didn't have issues, I don't think he'd be um, as enmeshed with her as he is. But uh makes me wonder what she's going to do with her property and with her house. Is she going to let the government take it? She can't leave it to anybody in the family because she hates everybody in the family. So she may will it to my brother. I don't know. But because he has issues, I don't know if he's capable of taking care of it by himself. So I don't know. I wondered about that. When you're a hateful individual and you own property or you own land, who gets it when you die? Because you're not going to leave a will because you all about you. Well, you may die, which no one's going to miss you because you're horrible. But I'm just saying. So does the government take everything? I don't know how that works. I really don't. Oh, well. What can you do? Anyway, much love to you guys. Y'all be cool like ice cubes and see you next time.